over the world, you'll find them. Roadside barbers in Durban, street vendors in New York City, waste pickers in Bangkok, pushcart vendors in India, vegetable hawkers in Toronto's Chinatown. Some call them informal workers, self-employed or micro-entrepreneurs. One thing is for sure, the informal economy is here to stay. More than half of the world's workers are now informal workers. It's the main source of employment for the majority of the developing world. Those who work in the open air are most visible. The least noticeable are often women. Many earn their livelihoods as home-based workers and domestic workers. And for them, informal often means invisible. Women are the backbone of informal work in most developing countries. They endure long hours for low pay, with little to no legal or social protections, no safety regulations, no sick days. So what happens when something goes wrong? มะเร็งมันลงปอดเนาะไปไปนอนที่โรงพยาบาลก็คือการดูแลเขาไม่ไม่ค่อยดี With 4500 members and a worldwide collaborative network HomeNet Thailand promotes the rights and protections of informal workers including both home-based workers and domestic workers HomeNet we established since 20 years ago uh, with the uh, non-government organization and home-based worker groups. Within this 20 years, we also success in terms of uh, the government passed the law on Home Worker Protection Act and the ministry regulation that protect the rights of domestic workers. We also part of the civil society who advocate for the uh, universal health care for Thai citizens. In 2001, the ambitious 30 baht treats all scheme introduced universal health care in Thailand. With no patient paying more than about one US dollar per visit, even the poorest could access health care services. Today, it's called the Universal Coverage Scheme, or UCS, and the payment has been removed. Under UCS, informal workers can now access free health care through public hospitals within their registered districts. Private, formal sector workers have the Social Security Health Scheme. Civil servants have their own medical benefits scheme. But the quality of care isn't always the same. เวลาเราปวดเราขอยาเขาขยาพลาทั้งๆที่บางครั้งหมอก็สั่งให้ฉีดนะเพราะมันปวดใช่มั้ยทีมเราสุดๆเนาะเขาก็ไม่เอามา
to register. Reaching out to migrant domestic workers is difficult since most work in their employers' homes and have no days off. Many of them don't know about contraceptives and uh, they get pregnant and they don't know how to protect, how to do family planning. So we said that we can use family planning and reproductive health as an issue to approach them and to organize them. So we start with this. In addition to workshops, HomeNet's health volunteers guide migrant workers in registering for and accessing health services. What we think is very important is not treatment, but uh, prevention and protection. For Thailand's more than 20 million informal workers, healthcare access often means complicated registrations and referral systems, long lineups, and a lower standard of care than for formal workers. India is embarking on its own plan for universal health care. Here, each year, health care costs drive some 60 million people into poverty. Over 80% of India's urban workforce are informal workers. Many are women. Many survive on less than $2 a day. Sewa is a national member-based organization of 1.9 million poor self-employed women workers. Established 43 years ago, it has grown from its flagship union and an all-women-run cooperative bank, the first in the world, to running trade organizations, cooperative daycare for children, and offering insurance, legal services, skills, and literacy training to members. Healthcare is also a critical focus for Sewa. After Sewa Bank started providing loans to poor workers, they found some had trouble paying them back. A study revealed why. Many of them could not pay because either they were ill or some of them even died during delivery. So that's when we realized that health problems is a major problem for these women because they spent all their savings on that. So that's how the whole health program of SEVA was designed to have a preventive bend to it. औरत काम करो छे दोरा कटिंग परवानु काम सिवानु काम એટલે આંખો બી દુખે બરાબર પછી બેઠા બેઠા કમ મર દુખે પછી આંગળા કપાઈ જાય આંગળીઓ રહી ને એમાં આ મજબૂત દોરો આવે દોરો ખેંચવાથી શું થાય આંગળીઓ કપાઈ જાય જમી બી ના શકાય વાસણ ધોઈએ તો બી એમ બળે આંગળા તો પ્રાઇવેટ માં જતા રહે પછી એમ થાય કે વધાર પડતું છે તો સરકારી માં જઈએ સાદા બેન છે સિવિલ માં ફોર અ વર્કર હર બોડી ઇઝ હર એસેટ so if she is not healthy and if we do not have those services at the doorstep then we cannot make the other points of our work stronger while public health care is free in india limited services lack of awareness and accessibility remains a huge problem so many indians even the poorest rely on private health care providers. But what really happens in the public uh, health uh, sector or public hospitals is the queues are long, the distance is too much, and it's very time consuming for them. They cannot afford to spend an entire day or even half a day going to a hospital because their earning for the day is lost. They prefer to go to a private hospital who's just next door. Kantaben was hospitalized after medicines did not cure her fatigue and 25-day fever. She had to pay for two courses of medicines out of her own pocket. Out-of-pocket health expenses create a cycle of debt and despair among India's poor. To help meet the health needs of informal workers, Sewa offers low-cost pharmacies, health insurance, health camps, and local diagnostic testing. The major gap that we have identified is education and that's the reason we started the information center within the community. 
અમને એ સેવામાંથી મળે છે તાલીમો લઈને મળે છે Sewa's community-based healthcare workers offer door-to-door -door education, provide health information, referrals, and even accompany women to hospitals. A major focus is on preventive care. Ana bo gich maria to hoy to awa ujas Gauri Ben has worked with 50 TB patients in her community. A pilot program also enables diagnostic testing through the use of the innovative Swastia Slate. With the help of this Swastia Slate or health tablet, we were actually able to test the blood sugar and blood pressure of the women on the spot. Frontline health workers provide diagnostic services to patients right on their doorsteps. Immediate test results, from ECGs to blood work, can be sent on for doctor referrals or can be used in preventive care. No lineups, no long commutes. Sewa's community health efforts put a priority on education, prevention, and early treatment. We have talked to many of the senior officials and they realize there is a gap they also realize that they need to work with organizations like us who are working at the grassroots, who work with the people. So here in Ahmedabad, Ahmedabad Municipal Corporation has come forward to actually talk to us to work at the community level. Sewa also advocates nationally for more government investment in health care, primary health care coverage, diagnostic screening, more frontline health workers, free essential drugs, and better access to services. SEVA team is working with the other states to take our learnings to other states. So that's how we are trying to uh, scale it up. Durban is South Africa's third largest city. And this is Durban's busiest intersection. In this area, um, Warwick Avenue, um, it's between 450 to uh, half a million uh, people that walks through this area a day. Neglected and abandoned by the apartheid government, Warwick Junction underwent a renewal during the post-apartheid period. Today, the markets of Warwick includes between 5,000 and 8,000 vendors trading in nine distinct informal markets. Richard Dobson is co-founder of ASEA Etafaleni, or AET, an NGO designing inclusive urban spaces for informal workers. The culturally rich markets of Warwick Renewal Project is a South African success story. The world is becoming more informal than it is going to be formal. So we need to place ourselves in a new paradigm about what that reality is and what that's going to mean for towns and cities and city conglomerates. I'm seeing it as livelihood as a continuum and one end is less regulated than another but it's people gainfully engaging in earning a livelihood and that's the way they're sustaining their families. And I think if Warwick is, has got any story to tell, it was, about, it was about process. It was starting to say, right, let's do urban redevelopment differently. Let's take people who are very much resident stakeholders and that the sense they have got the most to lose, let's actually bring them into the process you know, very intensively. AET co-founder Patrick Nlovu helps traders represent their needs to the city, like how to create safer, healthier workplaces. And they're also creating employment, you know, for people that are employed as farm laborers, and they are contributing immensely to the economy of the country. That's why I, I support them. Although they're still paying for permits, there's no infrastructure provided, so they're exposed to extreme weather conditions. The common complaints are, you know, around health. Um, it's water, uh, you know, sanitation. Uh, definitely there's no water uh, provided for them, uh, you know, to wash or to consume. So they have to buy water, you know, from all, you know, illegal sources, even from, uh, you know, public toilets. Those who cook have even more serious health concerns. Six days a week, Chloe Seely prepares cow's head meat and dumplings, a Zulu delicacy.
Then one morning, the unimaginable happened. While she was hospitalized, police officials shut her operation down, even though her trading permit was paid in full. Had she had the extinguishing equipment nearby that was appropriate, clearly the outcome for her would have been very different. AET worked closely with the traders to design on-site first aid boxes. It's purposefully designed with vocabulary that's from the street, it's the, the trestle table, it's the pallet wood. Chloe Seely and her fellow traders also took part in AET-facilitated occupational health and safety courses. When accidents happen, they're much better equipped to handle them. Under Durban's health system, citizens must register for health facilities nearest to where they live. Poorer informal workers, except for those who work from their own homes, work very far from the city centre leave work at 4.30 in the morning, way before health facilities are open, get home at 9 in the evening. Women are more disadvantaged than men because of their multiple responsibilities for their own health care and for their children and their elderly person and are likely to leave their own health problem until it is objectively too late. The women of working age who are responsible for taking the injured child to hospital and the frail elderly person at home to hospital when, when a health crisis strikes um, and that's just a, immediately income lost again. So what might health reform look like in an increasingly informal global economy? My biggest surprise is that in all three countries there is an absolute mechanism of exclusion because of either where you live or because you have to register at one health facility, either a clinic or a hospital. Better opening hours, shorter wait times, easier access to information, improved workplace infrastructure, simple and efficient registration and referrals. I think a real overhaul of medication costs, the out-of-pocket costs, are exorbitant. A stronger focus on preventive care will also put less strain on already burdened healthcare systems. The major shift is towards non-communicable diseases, so diseases of lifestyle, and that's where prevention really does come into its own. While government and private healthcare services do support preventive care, their major focus is on curative care. That's because private insurer benefits compensate doctors and hospitals for treating people who are ill, not in encouraging communities to stay healthy. In India, healthcare services follow two trajectories. One emphasizes early treatment and prevention. The other focuses on curative care, often resulting in expensive and unnecessary operations and medications. The preventive aspect of primary health care is being lost because insurance companies don't get any money out of it. They get money for surgery. They get money for unnecessary hysterectomies. They get money for the curative side. These challenges, along with poorly organized and complicated health services, leave informal workers vulnerable. Any worker alone is vulnerable. We need to be organized, not necessarily unionized, but we need to be organized. Only then the voice and the representation happens, and that's been our experience in Zeta. By scaling successful healthcare models that reduce the barriers to access, from long lineups and lost wages 
to unsafe working conditions and out-of-pocket medication expenses, we begin to address the real cost of healthcare because the cost of doing too little can be devastating.